just a little little breakout of the conference. Um, it was really good. It's a very sustainable affair. Everybody was in the spirit of the thing. So we decided to ask some questions live of the people there shortly after I spoke, then after a round, to, excuse me, a panel I was on discussing agritourism. And I do feel that wine tourism is part of agritourism. So we did a live um, survey. And most of the people who attended the conference filled it out and worked with us. And a lot of people gave us more feedback than we ever expected. <clears throat> so these were the important questions that we asked. You can see going through them <clears throat> what seemed to be really important to people. Um, stakeholder satisfaction, a road and transportation, sound familiar? That is a big issue. We are in a gorgeous rural area with small roads and no, virtually no public transportation. This is a real pity and something that I really hope is going to be addressed now as part of the post-fire effort because there weren't enough roads to get people out either. Mm -mm although most people did get out. It was mostly, sadly, the elderly who were not able to leave that, that died in that fire. So a lot of people are concerned about that. Another issue is um, how is tourism a force for good in Sonoma? Well, there you go. It definitely, definitely is a huge economic impact, especially wine tourism. It accounts for a, a very large part of the tourism to Sonoma County. And by and large, people have been really patient with the growth of tourism. But as things have gotten more crowded and um, people have become less patient with it. And I think that in the past few years, with the growth of the sharing economy, and especially with Home away, VRBO, um, Airbnb, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> There's been a real change in people's attitudes. And I would also have to add in the ride sharing services, too. Because we've always had a lack of housing in Sonoma County. And one of the reasons people love it there is that when you come to visit, you'll see we live in a beautiful rural environment with big open stretches of land right in the middle of towns, something you just never see other places. And that's all well and good, but there hasn't been enough housing built to anywhere near keep up with this growth in tourism, the growth in population. <clears throat> and now we lost 5,000 homes, so you can imagine it's really difficult. From the time that um, the sharing economy came to be part of it, Sonoma County is full of real, bright, well-educated people who immediately saw the possibilities of making money from their very often second homes. I should say here that Sonoma County has an inordinately large population of wealthy people. And that's been great for sustainability in that those people are by and large themselves very sustainability minded. But it has been difficult when it comes to uses of resources such as housing. Um, so that has been a, a situation that we're dealing with. And actually, I was going to start this by saying this isn't really um, the latest impacts um, of tourism on the environment, but the latest impacts of the environment on tourism in Sonoma County <clears throat> due to the fires, primarily. Um, so we decided to take the survey, and I think we really got some good information from people. There are very good things for many people about the sharing economy because it's allowed people to use their homes who might otherwise have to sell them as a source of income. So I don't want to paint it as a picture that's altogether a negative. And there's many people on both sides. And it is a definitely the hot topic issue in terms of tourism in Sonoma County. Also, you know, the taxation of homestays and such is a big topic because the um, tourism tax, the room tax, the bed tax, as some people call it, pays for a lot of things, a whole lot of things. And some of those things are the things that people in Sonoma have been using to keep the locals happy, such as the city of Sonoma in the center puts on an annual party that's not advertised except in the local paper 
It's not on all the uh, events this weekend. It's a private party, and it's a private party for the residents of the city. Everybody's invited, and there's really good bands and really good food, and it's a great give back to the community that has really raised goodwill a lot. Sonoma is famous for its events and as many as possible have a really open attitude towards the locals attending. So that's been a really good outreach thing for the community to tourism <clears throat> from the tourism department. Um, but after the fires things got a little more compounded. Where's my Ah, uh, yes. Road congestion, vehicle pollution, rising cost of living, and ecological harm and waste. Those are definitely the big threes. Microcropping in the wine industry has created a lot, a lot of lack of agricultural diversity, which has its effect on the whole ecosystem. Um, water, carelessness, a lot of runoff, not just from tourists, of course, but also from wineries and other things from vineyards. Um, over, overcrowding those roads, getting really, really crowded. We also have a full-on casino that's down a tiny road, a really tiny road, an actual large casino. That came some years ago, and it's been a source of irritation to some people ever since, but um, that's, that's the way things develop. So, Those are the big subjects in Sonoma. And right now, I would say in Sonoma County, the cost of living, the equal opportunity employment is huge. Um, there's definitely a factor there that um, a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, who were able to live in Sonoma up until a few years ago, and certainly before the fires, just can't afford to live there anymore. So there's a tremendous amount of people commuting in for the work, of which there's plenty. It's a lot of work but there's not a lot of places to stay for locals. <clears throat> and that's an issue that we will be reporting on as we get further and further along with the observatory. These are some groups we've been working with in Sonoma. So when we decided that we would work with the stakeholders, we also decided to put an emphasis the next couple of years on other NGOs and other local organizations. And that effort has been received enthusiastically, and we have been speaking at and attending many, many meetings all over the county relating in some way or another to tourism and getting a lot of support from the group there. It's a few of the other organizations. Sonoma State University has a very, very interesting independent institute within it on sustainability, and they made a decision that we concur with and are actually going to build out on with them, which is to make the, the resilience post-fire and fire mitigation and all the things that we're all learning so much about now in Sonoma County a focus of their work for the next few years. So we've basically committed to a five-year plan to really study how tourism has been affected and also how it's grown or changed post-fire. And I think it's going to be very interesting to report on to all of you because natural disasters happen everywhere and uh, how you deal with them is, is really, really important. And I will say that our, our local folks and our local systems did very, very well in the fire. It was really a, bra a bravura effort to immediately get out when the fire was so widespread. It covered a huge amount of territory. And things were just overnight, because it started in the middle of the night, it, uh, brought to a standstill. And it crossed a major freeway just from sparks. The sparks were so hot that the flames crossed, I guess, a six-lane or eight-lane freeway and burned down some large businesses in big, well-built buildings. So it was intense. So we're focusing on the rehabilitation of the fires, but that's not the only thing we're focusing on, although it's a big one, and how it affects tourism. I mean, there's stores that are empty when you, <clears throat> you couldn't touch them. People were begging for store space just two years ago. Just two years ago, Sonoma was fated on the cover of a number of magazines as the world's best tourism destination. 
But post fires, there have been much, much less tourism. It's not something we're, you know, putting a spotlight on, but it is definitely true. People are wary and they just don't want to go see a burned out place, which you don't see now when you go to Sonoma. But, you know, tourists don't see that. Tourists remember what they saw plastered all over the news for days. Oh, wait a minute. I do have to go back. Okay, so this group we're working with, these are all groups involved in the fire efforts. And towards the future. Here's what we're doing. That's my email address. That is our website. I was just talking to um, Senor Butler a few minutes ago, and he said, well, how, how's it going for you? I said, oh, great, so nice to meet you. He said, well, is there, are you all reaching out to each other within the observatories? And I said, well, I would like to see more of that because um, I think we have a lot to share. And he said, I'm sure, I'm sure you do. So my suggestion, <laughs> for what it's worth, um, and at his suggestion, was to request that we start, we have a mailing list of all of us so that we can be in contact with each other and uh, in a more readily accessible manner. That may already exist, but I have yet to receive it, and I'd love to. This beautiful um, painting was done by a bunch of immigrant students, great kids, first generation Americans, and uh, this is how they dream of their world being. They want to see all that beauty. They want to see all that nature. And it's my dream that we will be able to protect this beautiful creation and, and bring their dream to pass. Thank you very much. Anybody have questions, I guess, is the next thing.